So the Angel Fish Aquarium behind me is nearly two months old and it is looking great. So the first thing you may notice, all of the angel fish are out. Yay, they love me now. But this one here is one that's been out the whole time. Look at its top fin. It's got like split in it. Ah, oh, bless. But now I can't tell you how pleased I am to see that they're all coming out. They fully know now that when I come near the tank and tap, 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 it means there's food possibly coming or is coming. I will feed them now because having just trained them, ah, oh, it's so much better. In terms of Corys, we've still got a few of them hiding. They're coming out far more regularly than they ever used to. There's one right at the back there as well. We've got an auto sink list. But I would like to see them out far more often than we are at the moment. Oh, and can I just say quickly, what a fantastic job our cleanup crew has done in here. The bristlenose plecos and the auto sink list. There's basically no algae anywhere. And that's not from my cleaning at all. Apart from, there's a little bit... No, look, where, no, where that angelfish at the back is pecking at. There's a... T guys, come on. Look, I need, I need to film. There we go. Hopefully you can see it there before they all come. A little bit on that area that's right underneath that light and you can also see here the scum line on the top of the glass that's where we did have that oily surface and look no oily surface now so that tells me everything is getting balanced really nicely look at you hello <laughs> you're my favorite i shouldn't have favorites but you are my favorite <laughs> so what's the best thing to do when you want to see more corys add more of them to the tank of course so this tank here started out life as the Cory only tank but as we've gone on, I've added more and more fish to it from different tanks. They all get along really, really good together, so it's not a problem at all. And it's actually quite fun how the different species interact as well. Like for some reason, these ember tetras are always huddled in the middle. Cory's naturally on the bottom, but they tend to stay sort of more hidden unless there's food been dropped, which I'll do now so you can see. Right, I'll sprinkle the pellets. A lot of the other fish will try and get it as well, but it's okay once it falls through this pearl weed, which... Uh, which I need to trim back as well, don't I? Right, there we go. You can see it falling down through. Now watch how quickly all the quarries come. So to start with there, they weren't coming at all, were they? And then all of a sudden, just a whole flurry of them. They just go nuts in the foreground. Now, I wanted to come back in and take a look at them with the camera, but as soon as I come back in the room again, they all hide. Well, most of them anyway. <laughs> there we go. Look, now we've got lots and lots more quarries coming to the foreground. We've got those bristlenose plecos as well. Oh, look, there's the stir by quarry at the back there. So yeah, there's lots and lots in here. I mean, I'm going to have to probably tear this up a little bit to catch them. Pearl weed needs sorting out as well, doesn't it? Now, although pearl weed grows blinking fast and can be quite annoying, <laughs> it is also one of the easiest to actually trim back as well. Like for instance, I can get right down here quite quickly and I just pull it up in its own clump, if that's the right word. So then basically, in no time at all, look, you're pulling out massive sections of it obviously got to be careful we're not picking up any fish as well but we're not they're clever enough to get out of the way if you've got baby fish obviously you've got to be a bit more careful i mean i'm doing this and i'm probably going to tear the whole thing down in a minute anyway once the quarries are out do something new i know what i'm like i'll be like well the fish aren't in there now so you know i might as well start again it's done anyway like for me this tank was done a while ago but i'm just trying to trim up the show you know what it could look like there we go all trimmed nicely back up nice shape to this tank isn't it so i'm going to try and get these fish out without destroying the whole thing but it might be a struggle to be honest because they're all going to hide at the back straight away might get two nets one like here and another one to push them into it right i've got a nice jug of water to put them all in i, I really don't think that this is going to work that well though <laughs> And what I mean by that is, I think that they're just going to hide whatever my... Oh, 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 we've got one. Yay! Okay, this is going to take a while, but I might better do it without destroying the tank. It's unlikely, if I'm honest. <laughs> These are the little baby ones. These are the ones that I bred before myself. Come here, little baby. No, I just squished you. You're fine. <laughs> right, double net method. So what that basically means is we try and lure out any of the fish and then catch them with the second one. Got it! Look at that. That couldn't have gone any better. I bet it doesn't go as easy as that for the rest of them at all. In fact, I can't even see any of them. This is going to take a while. Oh, I forgot. We've also got a ton of pygmy quarries in as well. Oh, they're so cute. They're going to be great in the other tank. Yeah, so uh, this isn't going to work. I've currently caught six, I think. About six of the quarries. Now, there's way more of them in there than that, but they're just constantly hiding. There's so many places for them. And it's not going to happen without me taking this whole thing down. Oh, dear, such a shame. I'll have to build a new one. <laughs> I mean, the good news is most of these plants are in great condition, so we can reuse them again for new scapes. Right, 
Right, <laughs> all the plants are out, which look fantastic. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take each one and just place it on its own sort of rock system. Um, some of them already are, like, like look at that booster. How good does that look? Ready for another skate. I'm gonna do that to a lot of them really, so I can just place them anywhere. Now the water's very murky at the moment, it's just starting to clear. I forgot, there's loads of coolie loaches in here as well. There's one there, oh, there goes another one. You never see them, do you? Even in a tank like this, it didn't have, a, a, like, had more of an open foreground. You didn't ever see them. Oh look, and there's all the pygmy quarries as well. Right, all of these can go into the uh, angelfish tank. They'll be awesome in there. Now, some of you are worried about having coolie loaches with open top tanks. Well, there you go. Look, I sort of keep the water level around there, a little bit higher actually usually, and everything's all good. Yeah, they don't jump out. I think as long as they're comfortable in a tank with a lot of places to hide, they don't try and jump out. We've got the bristle nose in there as well. Oh, awesome. Going to be great additions here to the angelfish tank. I think I'm going to put the two rams that are in here, the gold ram and the standard ram. I think I'm going to put them into the Amazon aquarium. How good will they look in there? I mean, it suits, it's perfect for them, isn't it? So the water has now all cleared up and we can see all the fish. It's going to make it so much easier to catch them all. Corey's look, loads of them, absolutely tons. Uh, coolie loaches are going to go as well. I, I want to put the coolie loaches in the other tank. They're going to help with cleaning up the back areas. Ember tetras, um, not sparkling grammies. In fact, I could probably put all of the other fish into the new tiger barb aquarium, which, by the way, look, has got a heck of a lot of that fungusy stuff coming back on the wood. I think it's quite notorious for it, this wood, on the, uh, on the lighter side. None of it on the dark part at all. Never. Weird. Anyway, I can get all that off easy. But yeah, so all the oddball fish, they're going to come in here. They'll look really good. I think it will work nicely as well. Right, I'm just going to attempt to catch the corys um, without taking the water down. They should all come over to this corner. Come on, that out you come. That's it, double net method. Come on, that's it, all in the corner. We're going well, we're going very well. Okay, the moment of truth. Come on, I'm going to catch everything and separate them out afterwards. That was 100% the right decision to break down a tank. There's no way I could catch these fish with all the plants that were in there before, not a chance. So I did catch up a few of the pygmy corys, but I've decided I'm just gonna keep those all in there at the moment and catch them all out individually later on. I think I wanna do a setup just for the pygmy corys in a little nano tank. I think that'd be absolutely awesome. A real simple one that really shows them off. But we have now got a ton of corys down here in this little jar and then I also picked up the two rams as well. We've got a male and a female there, a gold and then a normal sort of coloration. And I'm now gonna add them to the Amazon tank. In you go, guys. Enjoy your stay. Already mingling in. It'd be interesting to see how they behave with the Bolivian rams, which are actually a little bit bigger looking at it. They've gone their own little area at the moment. Yeah, they've currently gone to that little back bit, look. Oh, this is gonna be hard. There's so many fish that the camera wants to focus on. Yeah, there we go, look. Be cool if they go in there. Sometimes when you move rams to a new tank, they sort of spawn straight away. I've had these two spawning before. They haven't actually done it since. So hopefully this could spur it on. I mean, it's the perfect environment for them. We've got these smooth rounded rocks here, plenty of places to get down and hide in. Hopefully that happens. That would be so cool to see some little baby rams in here. I mean, not that they would last unless we intervened, of course, which I probably wouldn't do because that's not my bag. <laughs> right, that's all the other fish sorted. We can now put the quarries into the angelfish aquarium. This is really exciting. I just feel like they're gonna absolutely love this upgrade as well. Right, the quarries are ready. In they go. Whee! <laughs> awesome, look at that. That's all of them, yet. Yeah. always check. Right, they're straight away down here on the sand bed. That's pretty cool, look. Not scared this to begin with. I mean, I've got no doubt that they're gonna go around and sort of hide at some point. But at the moment, they're just chilling. There's the stir by. Stir by at the back. There should be another one. I had two stir bys. Yeah, there he is. Right in that middle part there. I suppose a good thing is the angels paid no attention to them whatsoever, even though they've not been fed yet. Um, if they were smaller fish, I would have done some feeding first or distracted them, but you know, they, they're much bigger and it's not like they're going to attack a giant quarry, is it? I mean, these albino ones down there getting pretty chunky now. That little, those little bronze ones you can see, they're offspring, they're babies. I actually bred them. Well, I didn't. Look. The Corey's bred them, but yeah. Oh, look at that little tiddler there. And that one's like a second generation, no, first generation, second generation, and then parents at the back look. So that's cool. There's a first generation as well. Awesome, love that. Now, for some reason, due to like the white balance or something, these uh, albino Corey's, they look, look like a kind of a pink on them. I don't know what that is. Like in a tank, yeah, there's the slightest hue on the eyes and that, but the camera's white balance does something weird and it doesn't really, oh, hello, bye. <laughs> 
I don't want to be filmed today, actually. Um, you, I haven't given you permission to film me. Goodbye. Okay, mate, whatever. But look down the back here. We've got a, like a, a little party going on back there with those lot. Oh, there's the golds. I haven't seen them for a while. <laughs> Hopefully they're all going to come out a lot more. There's way more activity going on in this whole tank now, isn't there? It's awesome. And look at that, look. Even the bristlenose plecos come out to play. This fish is like, uh, hello, who are you? I've, I've not seen you around the tank very often. <laughs> yes, these are our new friends. Um, you're welcome all, everybody's welcome, because at the moment we're not vicious killers. <laughs> Look at the behavior now of the angelfish as well, like the way they sort of just all just move around together. Ah, oh, awesome to see. Right, I think we should get those coolie loaches in as well, even though we're probably never gonna see them. And they should be pretty easy to catch with the double net method. There's one of them. And then, oh yeah, there's another one at the back there. It's probably some hiding in amongst this. I think I had three in total, but I can't remember exactly. Right, hopefully this is easier than when I caught the quarries. Oh, there's already some fish in there. Get out, guys. <laughs> there's the, turn around. No, come back, come back. It's gonna be easier this way. Whoa, they're quite clever. Oh, he's gone, he's gone. Oh, there we go. Whoa, they're so fast, they're so fast. This is gonna be so hard. They can fit through the tiniest gap it's almost like they're one step ahead of you as well. This is oh, going to need a little bit of luck with this, I think. Like, it's going to need to just swim in itself. Right, after a lot of trial and error in trying to catch these guys, I got all three of them. It wasn't easy at all. One of them is absolutely nuts. Right, let's get them in a the tank. They're freaking out. Right then, in you go, little guys. See you the next time I take apart this tank. <laughs> or now. I'll see them for a little bit, I guess. Look at that. We've still got this one out in the foreground at the moment, but it won't be long before it's gone. Such an, a weird looking fish. My wife actually just came and bring my lunch for me. And oh, no, come back, I'm still talking about you. And she had never seen them before. And she was like, oh, what are those ugly snake things? Never put them in our house. <laughs> <laughs> and we have got a lot of fish in this tank now. So it's time to get the pellets in. These are um, aquarium sinking pellets. Use these for all my quarries. They work really well. I mean, they sink, look. Some, some of the fish will have a go, but it's almost like they're too hard for them, so they, they go right to the bottom where the quarries will pick them up. Some at this back area as well, because that's where the quarries keep going. There we go. It's quite a lot there. It's a good feed. Now, that might look like a lot to you guys, but I feed every other day, so don't look at that and think, wow, does he do that all the time? No, every other day, they have a nice big chunky feed. And I can already see the quarries coming out now. Look, they're coming to get all those pellets. They know they're in there. Look at this action. They're getting moving. There's a couple coming out over the back there as well. These two albino ones haven't got a clue what's going on at the moment. Come on guys, switch on. Oh, there's one there as well. There we go. Look at the size of these bronze ones, look. They're as big as the angels. <laughs> I mean, granted, the angels are only juvenile. Oh my goodness, we've now got a massive fluster of activity. All the quarries coming out, that's awesome. The albinos though, still unaware of what's going on. <laughs> but I can't get over this lot. Look at them, it's so cool. But really, I want to get them all out in the foreground here. Maybe if I step back and just chill out a bit, you know, just chill, just chill, zoom in. Look at that, so much going on. I love this tank. My wife just came in because I'm about to do our tank at home. And she was like, I want it like this. I want to do the two islands, which is cool from my point of view, because it's actually really simple to maintain. And they tend to always look good as well. I, I'm actually really fond of this scape now. I wasn't too sure to begin with because it wasn't so filled in but I do like it. The only thing I will say though, is that I don't think I'm gonna do that white background thing again. It looks like a flat wall against it, rather than you know something going off into the distance, which was the initial plan. I think next time I'll just stick to like a misting, or just nothing at all, to be honest. Like for instance, the rare fish ecosystem aquarium, there's nothing at the back there. So you do get that sort of darker patch that you can see, but I do think it looks way better and it does add more depth. So that's all the Corey's taken care of. Now I feel sorry for the angels. It's time for you to get some proper food. Put that in now. So I'm gonna be feeding them my aquarium flake food. These guys love it. Tap, 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 as always. Now I like to just put the uh, flake into the water and crumb it up in my hands. And then that way, look, it floats down straight away and all the fish get to have a go. Look at that. Woohoo! And the good thing about doing that, look, is multiple sizes in here different size mouths, different size fish. So they're all gonna pick at the bits that suit them the most. And to be honest, even though I fed the quarries previously with the quarry pellets, they'll all come out in a minute and be all after this flake food as well. <laughs> and they actually finished that in no time at all, which isn't a surprise really, given the amount of fish I've actually got in here. So I'll do it again. More food for you. Now that's a decent sized feed there. 
but I only feed every other day, so all good. Oh, the Corys are definitely gonna get hold of this stuff at the bottom in a minute. Look, they're already starting to come forwards. Pretty, pretty angels, aren't they? The Pinoy, with that blue part right on the top of the fish's head. The scales as well, look at how sort of sparkly the scales are. Looking so good. And given how shy they all were in the start, that I'm really pleased to see how it's turned out now. They are literally always in the foreground. <laughs> and you know, they do seem to be putting on a bit of size and I'm still not seeing any aggression between the other fish and hopefully it's gonna stay that way. If you're wondering what that is, by the way, it's just a little red root floater. Look at you wanted to get in the shot. <laughs> now I also wanna bring your attention over here to the angelfish aquarium. Something needs to be done. Now the moss is sort of mesmerizing, isn't it? But it is not good and I've been putting back cutting it for so long, but the time's come. I've got to do it and in the next video I'm going to be stripping this tank whole the whole thing back with a massive massive trim I've got no idea how that's going to work out I actually pulled apart some of this moss under here and I you know I pulled a gap in there just to see what it's like underneath it's pretty brown so I'm not sure how it's going to turn out but either way I've got to do it the fish are getting much bigger and they just got that front little bit to swim in which they don't seem to mind but you know we can give them a better better area than that, can't we? There's, there's not a lot going on there because the hardscape in this tank comes so far forwards. Plus that piece of wood underneath of all that moss, it's like, it's tiny. And it's like four times the size with the moss on it. Yeah, it's too much. I've got to do something as much as I don't want to. Arr, it's gonna spoil it probably. Either two things will happen. Number one, it'll look fine. It will grow back nicely, steadily, or it'll look awful. And I'll just start again and just do another awesome scape for the rainbows. Either way, stay tuned to find out. But one really good thing I know is that these free 20 watt LED floodlights are absolutely brilliant at growing plants. And that means there'll be one less thing to mess about with in the next build.